If you've never cleaned your Rossi 92 or you'd like a refresher, then you're going to need five things. You're going to need a couple of screwdrivers that fit really good, a couple of punches. You're going to need a blank cartridge or an empty case. You're going to need your Rossi and you're going to need to watch the rest of this video. I hope you'll stick around. Hi, George here, and welcome to Tales from Target Suite, where I'll share my perspective on guns and shooting, and we'll have an adventure or two that will make even a grown man smile. And it was an adventure for me the first time I broke into my Rossi or my Winchester 1892, but it gets easier with time. And I thought we would revisit this subject with the 454 Casul, the Rossi 92 that we showed a few weeks ago, the beast of a rifle and I think it does need cleaning. So let's get started. Okay, if we were disassembling a Henry or a Marlin lever gun, it would be really easy. And here is a bolt finger lever assembly out of a Henry. And in order to get this gun, this type of gun disassembled, we just remove the finger lever pivot screw, pull out the finger lever, pull out the bolt. Just that simple. But it's a little bit more involved here on a Rossi or Winchester 1892 style John Browning designed receiver because the finger lever is actually pinned to the bolt itself and the pin lives behind this cover screw. And so the first thing we're going to do is take out this cover screw and before we go any farther, I wanted to show you my fancy little block here that I just made. I've got one that's much larger at the farm, but this has a curved surface. And as I set my firearm up on there, then I've got a nice firm surface and the gun does not rock and roll while I'm trying to work on it. So let's get this cover screw out. Now we're going to need to take off the stock. And there's a single screw right here on Rossi's. And the real reason we need to take the stock off is because we have to relieve pressure on the mainspring so that the hammer is not under tension. And I'm going to give you a close up view right here of the process of capturing the mainspring. Okay, now that we have the mainspring captured, let's take this pin out and we're going to take it out from the right side, driving it out. I've got a really short punch here and so I've got to be really careful not to overdrive up to the point where it starts to flare out because if I do that then I can actually damage this hole. And so I'm going to be really careful as I tap in and not make sure I don't drive my punch too far. And the reason it was so loose is because I've done this several times. And so there is the pin. So now we'll take out the hammer screw. Now to get this screw out easily, if we just pull on the trigger, it takes pressure off of the hammer. The trigger itself because of the trigger spring, put substantial pressure on the hammer. So we'll just pull the trigger, then the screw comes right out. And then we'll do the, exactly the same thing when we're reinstalling this and we need to line up the hammer with that hole, then we'll just pull the trigger and that gives us freedom to move the hammer wherever we want. But if I put the hammer where it needs to go and I let go of the trigger, 
then it's not in spot. So, all right, now we'll take out the lower tang. And you just have to worry it out. Sometimes they're very tough, especially on a new gun. And then the hammer drops out just like this. And we open the finger lever up a little bit and then it, this comes right out. And there is the finger lever assembly with the two locking lugs. And now the bolt just slides right out. Be careful when you take your the bolt out because the extractor, and I'll give you a close look here real quick, the extractor can come right out and there are some small parts there that you can lose. Like this guy right here. You don't want to lose, that's the thrust washer. You don't want to lose the thrust washer. Okay, well there it is, but it wasn't this clean when I took it apart. There was quite a bit of powder in there. In fact, let me give you a quick look at what it looked like when I first took the gun apart. But let me explain, the oil you see in there is not from the owner. I put that in there myself trying to wash out some of the powder because I thought it might have been hampering the cycling of the 45 Colt rounds. So let's get started on reassembly, but I want to give you a close-up look at the engagement between the finger lever, the bolt, and the extractor. Of course, we're going to reattach the hand lever to the bolt inside the gun with the bolt already in the gun, but I wanted to show you how everything comes together in the open so you can see what the challenges are. But here is the extractor and the extractor thrust collar right here, and you can see it has a shiny surface and it also has a dull surface. So the dull surface on the end goes against the spring and then this shiny surface right here actually rubs against the finger lever right there. When the finger lever is actuating, this cam pushes on the extractor. Alright, so that's item number one. Now let's put this in the bolt. And that thrust washer is right there. And that thrust washer, let me see the bolt goes in just like this. Or the extractor goes in just like this. And that thrust washer catches on this hook right here. And then it is compressed and that hook is what keeps the thrust washer in place. Now the problem is when we want to reinsert the pin the tail end of the extractor is blocking the hole. Right there, you see it blocking the hole. And so we actually have to push on the extractor to open up the hole to allow this pin to go through the receiver, the, extra the bolt, and the hand lever. And in order to do that, we take a blank cartridge and we hook it up underneath the ejector right here. There's the ejector. We hook the cartridge up underneath the ejector, rotate it down, and now the hole is open. So it's under this condition and, and this is the way we will actually install the bolt into the rifle and we'll just barely hook the cartridge in the chamber and then that will hold everything in alignment. I'm going to try to do this a little bit here while I'm holding everything with my hand and it's difficult. And now when we want to insert the hand lever up into the bolt and then get this hole and this hole aligned, the thrust washer is in the way. And so in order to get those holes aligned you actually have to push forward on with some force on the hand lever to get the two holes aligned. Okay, well I realize that's not altogether true because once you have the bolt installed in the receiver, you don't have to push forward on the hand lever like I was describing here, but you do have to worry it into place and it is under tension. So sometimes it takes a little time to 
get things lined up. But once you do, at least on this gun, the pin will just drop into place flush with the receiver and then you can tap it home. And so that's what we're going to be dealing with once we install this inside the receiver. Okay, there's our bolt with the extractor installed and our cartridge which is going to maintain position of the extractor while we further assemble. And so you can see the bolt or the uh, cartridge is just inserted into the chamber and that holds everything where it needs to be. Okay, the locking lugs are not permanently attached to the finger lever, so I'm going to give you a look at the how things look. The orientation's got an angle to top on the locking lugs. A big recess down here on the inside of each one. There is a smaller recess at the top, but just if you need to come back and look at this to refresh yourself how it goes back together, well, that's what it looks like. With it looking like this, we just stick it right up into the rabbits for the locking lug right there. And now we begin a process of just kind of trying to find where everything fits. So I'm closing the bolt a little bit, I'm pushing in this way, but you'll just have to experiment with your own technique to get everything to work. But once you get to this point, now the challenge is to get everything lined up right there so we can get the pin back in. And of course I said earlier that the pin would go in from the right side but it actually goes in from the left side. Chamfer in first. I'm going to look down in there, try to get the holes lined up pretty good. And if I'm really lucky, it drops in just like that. Now I can tap it in till it bottoms out. But you notice I tapped pretty gently and we want to make sure that I haven't over inserted the pin because then the pin would be dragging on the far side of the receiver. So this looks great. All right, now let's reinstall the hammer in the lower tang. Okay. There we go. Get our mainspring strut down here where it can be captured right there. I'm going to pull the trigger like I was talking about earlier. Visually line up the hole in the lower tang with the hole in the receiver. Then get the hammer aligned also. Now this screw should just drop right in, just like that. Okay, the only thing left to do now is put our stock back on. Oh, it's not the only thing left. We'd still have our mainspring is captured with this little nail. So I'm going to pull back just a little bit on the hammer and then the, this nail comes out. And now we're ready to put the stock back on. There it is. <laughs> well, there it is now, because if you were paying attention, you notice I forgot to put in the cover screw for the pin. But the Rossi 92 design assembly, a disassembly reassembly, it is a very complex 
uh, receiver. It's kind of a complicated design to put back together, take apart correctly and put back together. So if you're not really comfortable with that and willing to take the risk of not being able to get it back together, then I would encourage you strongly, don't try. So with that said, I want to say thanks for watching. I hope it was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.